Hello everyone and welcome back. In this new lesson we're going to continue the implementation of our data table and we're going to add it the data selection feature. So let's quickly display here this material data table on the screen. What we're going to do is to take the current version of the data table and we're going to add here a column to the left which is going to be the selection column. The selection column is going to allow the user to select multiple data rows from the data table, for example, for deleting them, for doing some operation to them, such as, for example, exporting them to an Excel file, etc. There will also be a select all checkbox in the header of the selection column that is going to allow us to select all the rows in the data table. Now that we understand how the data selection feature is going to work in our data table, let's start its implementation by talking about the data model of our solution. So here at the level of our component that contains our data table, we're going to be adding here a new member variable called selection. The selection member variable is going to represent the list of rows that the user has selected from the data table by clicking on each of those rows checkboxes. In order to make it easy for us to model the selection of the user, Angular Material provides us with a selection model class. So this takes one parametric value, which is going to be the type of the data rows that the user is selecting. So in our case, this is a list of lessons. So each data row represents a lesson. We can pass in here to selection model a couple of parameters. So the first parameter is a Boolean flag saying if we allow for the selection of multiple entries or not. In our case, we want to implement the selection of multiple rows, so let's set this to true. If we don't want multiple selection, then we would need to set this to false. The second parameter that we need to pass in here is going to be the initial selection of the user. In our case, we are going to start with no rows selected, so we are going to initialize this to the empty array. Now that we have a data model to nicely represent the user selection, let's populate it by implementing here in our template the select column. So for implementing our column, we are going to need here a new ng container like we did for all the other free columns of our model. Let's start by defining here the directive matColumnDef with the column number. We are going to call our column select. And by the way, we also need to add this new column here to our list of displayed columns. So this is a member variable containing here the columns that we want to display on the screen in their display order. So the order of this array is important. So let's go ahead and let's add here the new select column to the beginning of our array. This way, the selection column is going to be the first column of the table. Let's then implement the selection column. We are going to start by implementing the header. Let's, as usual, add here a table header HTML element. And now we need to add to it, as usual, the exact same Angular Material directives as with any other table header. Now, the table header is going to contain the select all checkbox. We are going to implement this at the end. Right now, in this part of the lesson, we're going to be focusing on the individual checkboxes that allow us to select a single row. As usual, to these data cells, we need to add these directives here, including matcell. So we need to add both matcell and matcelldef, otherwise this will not be considered as a cell template. Inside our selection cell, all we need to do is to add an angular material checkbox. This material checkbox is going to detect the change event that is going to get triggered whenever the user clicks on the checkbox. So whenever this change event gets emitted, we're going to update our data model here in our component. So I'm talking about the selection data model that we need to update. So whenever the change event gets triggered, we are going to be calling here a new method that we're going to be calling on lesson selected, and we're going to pass it the lesson that was just selected or unselected. Actually, we should call it instead on lesson toggled. 
because this is going to be triggered whenever the lesson is selected, but also when the lesson is unselected. So in both events that we can trigger with a material checkbox. Let's go ahead and let's implement this method here in our component. Let's implement it here at the beginning of the component. This is going to be called on lesson toggled and we're going to be passing in here the lesson parameter. Inside this method, all we have to do is to update our selection model. Let's have a quick look at the API of the selection member variable. So as we can see, we have here multiple utility methods that allow us to check if a given lesson is selected or not. And among them, we have the toggle method. This is going to allow us to toggle the selection of a given entry on the selection list. In our case, we want to toggle a particular lesson. Let's now have a quick look at the list of lessons that have been selected by the user so far. We can do so by using here the selection member variable and by accessing here the selected property. As we can see, it returns us an array which contains the list of lessons that have been selected by the user. Let's now try out this implementation of on lesson toggled. So we already have here our new selection column. If we click here in one of the checkboxes, we're going to see that the row shows up as selected, but we can also see that our selection functionality is interfering with our collapsible data table functionality. So whenever we click here on the checkbox, we are collapsing or expanding here the data row panel and that's not what we want. So in order to avoid this, we're going to go back here to our template and we are going to detect here the click event here at the level of the selection data cell and we're going to avoid its propagation to the outside of the cell. So let's grab here the dollar event variable and let's stop the propagation of the event. Also, we are updating here the data model selection whenever a lesson gets toggled, but there are other parts in the component that might affect in the future the selection data model. So if that is the case, then we want that to be reflected here in our checkbox. We want to make sure that this checkbox is properly checked if the corresponding lesson in this data row is selected. So we are going to set here the checked property of the checkbox and we are going to access here the selection data model. Using the selection data model, we have here a method called isSelected. If we pass it the lesson of our data row, we're going to get back a boolean here that is going to be true if the lesson is currently selected. And if that is the case, then we want to automatically mark the checkbox as selected so that the data table reflects always the content of the selection member variable. Let's try out again our selection feature. So this time around, if we select in one line, we can see that no longer we are expanding here our data row. However, if we click anywhere else on the line, the data row will still expand and collapse as expected. Notice that whenever we expand here the data rows, this is only occupying three cells. We want to fix this. Let's go back here to our template and here in our expanded detail instead of making this span three columns let's now make this expand the full four columns and with this we have finished the implementation of individual rows of our data table but what about the selection table header we want to add here another checkbox which is going to be the select all checkbox let's implement it and let's see how this will work Let's start by simply adding here the material checkbox component and let's start by synchronizing its state with our data model. So we're going to be implementing here the check the property and we're going to access our selection data model. From here, we're going to access the list of selected values, which is an array, and we're going to test for its length. We are going to see if the length is equal to the total number of rows in our data table. So the data table data is accessible here via the lessons member variable, which is also an array. So let's go ahead and let's grab its length and let's compare it to the length of the number of selected items by the user. 
So only if the user selects all the rows in the data table will the checkbox show as checked. Let's try out this new feature. We're going to see that the selection box is here present. Let's start by selecting here multiple entries on the data table. So, so far the checkbox is not yet selected, but once we click here, then we're going to see that the select all checkbox gets automatically updated as expected. If we unselect one of these values, this is no longer checked. So as you can see, this functionality is working as expected. But if we check here our component, we can see that there is a lot of logic here on the template and we might need this comparison operation elsewhere in our template, as we're going to see in a moment. So let's refactor this, let's remove this and let's move this to a method that we're going to be calling is all selected. Let's implement this method in our component so we can add the method automatically to the component using the alt enter shortcut here in our WebStorm IDE. And let's implement this by returning this result so we can see that we are missing here the disqualifier and also here. So with this, we have nice implemented here the is all selected method. Now, all we have to do is to say what the checkbox should do whenever we click on it. So if that is the case, we are going to be calling a new method called toggle all. Let's start by detecting here, like we did before, the change event. Whenever this event gets clicked here on this checkbox, we are going to be calling toggle all. Let's now implement this method here in our component next to is all selected. So this is going to work in the following way. We are going to start by checking here if all the entries have been selected. If everything is selected, and we can check this using is all selected, then we want to clear the selection. We can do so by accessing here the selection member variable and by calling clear. On the other hand, if we have clicked here on the checkbox and we are not clearing the full selection, then we are selecting everything. So in order to select all the entries, we are going to access our data model. We're going to call here the select method and we're going to pass it the selected values. In this case, it's the full content of the lessons array. We will need to expand here the array using the array spread operator in order to fix this small compilation issue. Let's now quickly try this out. So we're going to select here a couple of values and we're going to see that the selection is correctly displayed and that the checkbox toggle functionality is working as expected. But you will notice that there is here a small glitch. For example, if we go back here to the courses screen and we go back here to the course screen where the data table is, pay close attention to the value of the select all checkbox. You see there is a small visual glitch here. The checkbox shows initially as populated, which we don't want. And this is because going back here to our code, the checked property here of the checkbox is going to be selected if is all selected returns true. And this method is going to return true also in the initial case when the lessons array is still empty and we haven't fetched yet the data from the backend. So in order to avoid this, we want to make sure that we only show this checkbox as true if the user has selected at least some value. If the user has not yet selected any values, then we don't want to show any state to the user. And since we are here, let's add here another nice feature here to the select all checkbox. We are going to be using the material checkbox indeterminate state, which is a checkbox state that is somewhere between selected and unselected. This is not available in normal browser checkboxes. This state, we're going to set it to true in order to indicate that the user has selected at least some of the rows of the data table, but not all of them. So we want to make sure again that the user has selected at least some value, but we want to make sure also that the user has not yet selected all the values on the table. We can check that by negating here is all selected. And with this, we have implemented all the data selection features that we needed. 
Let's try this out, we're going to switch to a larger window, let's click on our data table and keep a close eye to the select all checkbox, so the visual glitch has been solved. If we now start selecting here some rows, we're going to see here that the selection model is getting correctly filled in, and we can see here the indeterminate state of the select all checkbox. If we select everything, the select all checkbox gets checked, if we uncheck everything, the select all checkbox gets unchecked and we can toggle here the full selection using the select all checkbox. So as we can see, everything is working correctly as expected. Let's now in our next lesson finish the implementation of our data table. We're going to add it one last advanced feature. We're going to talk about sticky columns and headers.